There's nothing quite like being in a remote location, cut off from the complications of the modern world and sleeping under a blanket of stars. The joy of witnessing those magical sunsets and sunrises that paint the landscape in marvellous colours, of waking up above the clouds and witnessing a cloud inversion, or surviving some extreme weather and regaling in the tale for ages after. There is nothing quite so liberating as wild camping, and Dartmoor is an ideal location to do just that. It's a beautiful and often desolate landscape, seeped in history, great for honing your navigational skills, and for the most part, it is legal to wild camp here. As our subscriber base increases and the popularity of Summit or Nothing's wild camping exploits continues to encourage many others to get up off of their sofa and step into the great outdoors, I thought it was high time that I put together this guide to wild camping on Dartmoor to ensure that newcomers are prepared, educated, safe and responsible. Consult the Dartmoor camping map. It's common knowledge that wild camping is free and legal on Dartmoor. However, it is not so well known that there are still many areas of the National Park in which camping is prohibited. In fact, when Nathan and I started out, we were unaware that such a map existed and would often camp in spots where we shouldn't have been. So where can you camp on Dartmoor and how do you know? There is a map online that you can consult in order to find out where you can and cannot camp on Dartmoor. You can find a link in the video description below. There are also a few other rules with regards to camping on Dartmoor which can be found in the backpack camping code. These include rules such as you must always camp over 100 meters away from any road and must pitch in such a place that you cannot be seen from any road or dwellings nearby. Bear in mind where you are pitching in regards to your own safety. There are floodplains and marshy areas that could swamp quickly during Dartmoor's wet seasons. Do not camp near any farmland, areas of special interest, nature reserves or archaeological areas. Do not light any open fires and take your litter home with you. There's a link to the full backpacking camping code below in the video description. Be aware of firing times. Dartmoor has three military ranges where there are often live exercises taking place. These areas are highlighted on the OS map as a series of red triangles which always point into the white range area and on the moor they can be identified with a row of red and white markers. Whilst it's fine to enter these areas, it is advised that you are aware of the firing times or that you keep an eye out for any raised red flags during the day or at night look out for red lights. When there are firing exercises, keep out for your own safety. Once again, there's a link to the Dartmoor firing times below in the video's description. Check the weather before you leave. Whilst you can't always guarantee that the weather is going to be favourable, even when forecast, it's best to check the weather before you leave and alter your plans accordingly. You may want to avoid crossing any rivers or boggy areas during heavy rainfall or to not pitch your tent on the side of a tour when there are 60 mile an hour winds forecast. Clothing. It is advisable that you are prepared to get damp when entering Dartmoor. The ground is considerably wet, there are many rivers to cross and bogs in which you could end up up to your waist, so it's advisable that you take extra clothes to change into. A good set of waterproofs is a must. You are prone to be up in the clouds even if the weather in nearby towns is forecast as dry. You may wish to wear heavy duty hiking boots and gaiters to prevent water from filling them. Take an insulated jacket. Down jackets are a great addition. They can keep you warm once you stop or as the sun goes down and will compact very small and take up next to no room in your backpack. When I camp, especially through the winter, I make sure I have enough layers to put on throughout the night. Thermals are essential in the colder months. And I also take a warm hat, gloves and additional socks in colder times too. Safety gear. To ensure that you enjoy Dartmoor, it is important that you remain safe. Here is a list of items that is strongly advised that you carry with you. An OS map and compass, a whistle, a phone, a torch and spare batteries, a first aid kit. A map and compass is essential on Dartmoor. It's so easy to get lost and lose your bearings, even in good visibility. So it's important that you have basic grasp of map reading. I will put a link to a great training group, Crag to Mountain, in the video description. They do a basic navigation course that could get you out of trouble. Phone apps are also good, such as the OS app or View Ranger, which use GPS to keep track of you. Make sure that you keep your phone charged. I always take a Pebble charging block with me. 
If you haven't got anything to charge on the go, it's suggested that you leave your phone off until you need it. A whistle is great for being heard if you cannot be seen. If you have fallen or are stuck in a bog, then a whistle could save your life. And always let someone know of your intended whereabouts. Dartmoor is over 360 square miles, and it's going to be hard to search for you if you don't specify the area you are planning on exploring. What to camping? Tents are ideal for keeping you protected from the elements and any creatures that may be out on the moors with you. But if you are feeling adventurous, then tarp camping or even bivy camping is a much lighter option and really gives you a feeling of being at one with the land. A lesser known fact is that you are only permitted to camp on Dartmoor with a lightweight camping tent or shelter. Large family sized tents are prohibited. Sleeping equipment. It's advisable to take the appropriate sleeping bag to the season. You can always add additional sleeping bag liners if you want extra insulation. Top tip, if you add your sleeping bag liners to the inside of your sleeping bag before you leave, then they will take up no extra room in your backpack. A sleeping pad or mat can offer extra comfort, but also stops you from losing body heat to the ground. In winter, I even take two for additional thermal efficiency. Cooking equipment. As I mentioned before, Dartmoor is a strictly no fire area. The peaty marshland and lengthy grass is very flammable and there is a risk throughout the year. However, you are permitted to bring cooking apparatus, although there are strictly no barbecues. You can use small stoves. I use either a Jetboil Zip or the Transion Mini. Hot food is practically essential, especially if camping during the winter. I advise you to check off the beaten pot for some great meal ideas and camping hacks. You will also need plenty of water, but remember that every litre of water is an additional kilogram in weight. You can always drink water from the moors, but it will need filtering and purifying. I use a Soya mini water filter, but many people use water purification tablets. It's also advisable that you boil any water too, just to be sure, and that you make sure that there are no dead animals upstream that could contaminate the water supply. What if you need the toilet? May seem a funny question, but if you are planning on two or three days on the moor, then it's inevitable that you are going to need the toilet at some point. Unfortunately, there aren't any public conveniences on the moor. If you do need to go, then it's important that you do it discreetly. Make sure that you are 50 metres away from and downhill from any water sources or footpaths. Take a folding trowel, dig out a turf at least six inches down and go in there. Then, when you're finished, drop any tissue paper you may have used into it and cover it back over. But do not bury any nappies or sanitary items. So now you know the rules, you know what to bring, how to keep safe and warm and how to protect the environment so that others can enjoy this beautiful wilderness. All that is left for me to say is enjoy. I hope that you enjoy camping on Dartmoor as much as I do. If you're unsure of anything mentioned or if you have anything to add, then please do not hesitate to drop a comment below. And you can check out our Dartmoor Wild Camping in this playlist. Cheers.